Section 11.4 is going to introduce you to tree diagrams, which is a way to help you count how many possibilities are going to be in your sample space and to calculate probability. First rule is the counting principle. If a first experiment can be performed in m distinct ways and a second experiment can be performed in n distinct ways, then the two experiments in that specific order can be performed in m times n distinct ways. So for example, let's say we're trying to flip a coin and roll a die. There is two ways that a coin can land and there are six ways that a die could land. So the combination of the number of ways you could flip a coin and roll a die would be 12 different ways. You just multiply the two numbers together. A sample space is going to be a list of all the possible outcomes of an experiment. So for example, if I was talking about the coin and the die, there's 12 items in the sample space. There could be a head one, a head two, head three, head four, head five, head six, tail one, tail two, tail three, tail four, tail five, tail six. That's called my sample space. It's all the possible outcomes of the experiment. A sample point is each individual outcome in the sample space. So for example, I put money on the fact that there was going to be a tail two to come up. That would be a sample point, um, which would be a one in 12 probability. Tree diagrams are sometimes helpful in order to create the sample space. So you can organize what will happen in experiment one. You either land on a head or a tail. And then you can organize what's going to happen in experiment two. There's six possible ways the die could land. And that'll help you generate the sample space. So let's look at an example um, of creating a sample space from a tree diagram. A radio station has two tickets to give away to a Blake Shelton concert. It held a contest and narrowed down the possible recipients down to four people, Christine, Mike, Larry, and Phyllis. The names of two of these four people will be selected at random from a hat, and the two people selected will be awarded the tickets. So let's move this out of the way. So, A, use the counting principle to determine the number of sample points in the sample space. Okay, so keep in mind when you do this, there was originally four people that had their name in the hat. One person's name was drawn from the hat and removed, which means on the second trial, there's three people left. So if you multiply this, your sample space is going to have 12 people in it. B, construct a tree diagram and list the sample space. So there was Christine, Mike, Larry, and Phyllis. So I'm going to pull two people from the hat. First pull, I could have Christine, Mike, Larry, and Phyllis. Second pull, Christine has already been drawn, so I could either get Mike, Larry, or Phyllis. If Mike was pulled first, I could get Christine, Larry, or Phyllis. If Larry was pulled first, I could get Christine, Mike, or Phyllis. And if Phyllis was pulled first, I could get Christine, Mike, or Larry. Okay, so your sample space then would be Christine, Mike, Christine, Larry, Christine, Phyllis, and I'm just going up the diagram when I'm doing these combinations. I could have Mike, Christine, Mike, Larry, Mike, Phyllis, Larry, Christine, Larry, Mike, Larry, Phyllis, Phyllis, Christine, Phyllis, Mike, Phyllis, Larry. That's my sample space. 
Now we can use the sample space to create probabilities. Keep in mind there's 12 possibilities. So question C says determine the probability that Christine is selected. So let's find all the ways that Christine was selected. So it was Christine and Mike, Christine and Larry, Christine and Phyllis, Mike, Christine, Larry, Christine, Phyllis, Christine. So one, two, three, four, five, six different ways Christine got to go. Oops. Out of 12 possibilities, so the probability that Christine gets selected is one half or 50% chance. Okay, question D. Determine the probability that Christine is selected and then Mike is selected. So there's only one situation where Christine is selected first and Mike is selected second. One out of 12 possibilities, so there's a one in 12 chance. So a lot of times the um, tree diagram just helps you generate an organized list. Let's look at a similar example using a tree diagram. Two balls are to be selected with replacement from a bag that contains one red, one blue, one green, and one orange. So with replacement, it's going to matter here because um, it's not like the previous one where you, know, you couldn't select Christine twice. That's without replacement. With replacement means you draw the bag, look at the color, throw it back in the bag. Okay. So we're gonna do a similar thing. We're gonna construct a tree diagram. We're gonna figure out how many items are gonna be in our sample space first, and then we'll start analyzing our probabilities. So our bag has one orange, sorry, one red, one blue, one green, and one orange. So that means there's four balls that are in the bag on the initial draw. We are putting the balls back in, so there'll be four balls that are on the second draw. So there's 16 possible ways that I could pull the balls from the bag. So let's construct our tree diagram and then we can start um, listing out problems. Okay, so in this situation, we have red, blue, green, and orange on the first draw. Red, oops, <laughs> can't write. Red, blue, green, and orange. And then on the second draw, you could also pull red, blue, green, orange. So if you count, you have 16 um, branches going to the second set. Okay, so the question was um, to determine our sample space. So if we go down the first branch, we can have um, red, 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 blue, red, green, red, orange. If you go down the second branch, you can have blue, red, blue, 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 green, blue, orange. If you go down the third branch, Green, red, green, blue, green, 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 orange. Last branch, orange, red, orange, blue, orange, green, orange, orange. So that's your sample space with 16 items. Now that you have your sample space created, you can answer your probability questions. So the first question says, determine the probability that the red ball is selected twice. So in this um, sample space, there's only one situation where we get red, red. So there was one that happened out of 16 total. So the probability of getting red, red is one out of 16. Question D, determine the probability that neither ball selected is orange. So we don't want any orange balls in our sample space. So if we go through It looks like there's nine different ways to not have any oranges counted, and there was 16 possibility, possibilities total. So the probability of getting no orange balls is nine out of 16. 
And then question E, determine the probability that the orange ball is selected at least once. So again, you could go through and you could count um, the, the probability of orange balls. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven possibilities out of 16 total. You could also, whenever you have this at least once probability, there's a special formula that you could use where you could just do one minus the probability of no red balls, which we found in part C, and that would also give you the answer of 7 sixteenths. So that formula that I just used is on this page. The probability that an event happens at least once is one minus the probability that the event does not happen at all. So for example, if you're planting flowers, suppose the probability of not getting any red flowers is two out of seven. So if I asked what the probability is of getting at least one red flower, you would do one minus two over seven, which would be five over seven.